हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग कंटिन्यूइंग विद आवर सीरीज इन ट्रॉमा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू पार्ट थ्री ऑफ ट्रॉमा सो इन द अर्लियर टू क्लासेस वी डिड जनरल ट्रॉमा टुडे वी विल ट्राई टू डू लिटिल बिट ऑफ थोरासिक ट्रॉमा अबडोमिनल ट्रॉमा सम स्पेशल ट्रॉमास एंड ऑफ कोर्स ऑर्थोपेडिक ट्रॉमास इफ यू गाइज कैन सी मी एंड यूर मी क्लियरली प्लीज गिव अ थम्स अप इन द चैट बॉक्स आई कैन सी योर मैसेजेस इन चैट पीपल हैव ऑलरेडी ज्वाइन इन ऑनलाइन Yes. Good evening. So, if I am visible and audible, if you can see my presentation, please let me know so I know we are on the same page. I will just write a message in the chat box. Great. Okay. So, as you guys are joining in, remember to uh, write your answers in the chat, and then we can discuss. So, friends, I am Dr. Amrit Nasta. I am your surgery educator on the Un Academy platform on the Let's Crack Neat PG channel. I am a bariatric and laparoscopic surgeon based in Mumbai. If you wish to learn more from me on the please download the Un Academy learning app. On this app you will find videos of a lot of educators like me covering different different subjects some really famous educators who cover different different all 19 subjects are covered on the platform there are a lot of upcoming batch courses depending on what exam you are targeting whether you are targeting neat pg 2021 or next 2022 or fmg so for different different exams there are different different batch courses on the plus platform which you can subscribe to if you subscribe remember to use the code that is 10 surgery 10 surgery is my referral code that will get you a 10% discount on whatever subscription plan you take you can take the plus plan or you can take the iconic plan iconic is a dual plan so there are two components one is the plus component other is the prep ladder component prep ladder gives you more benefits so you have video lectures question banks handwritten notes and so on but if you want something for short term of course you can take the plus subscription plus subscription you can take of shorter duration 1 month 3 month 6 months whereas the iconic subscription is for 12 months or longer whatever you choose remember to use my referral code 10 surgery this code will get you a 10% discount in whatever subscription plan you take all right so that is about us that is about the neat pg platform uh remember to follow me you will get updates about my special classes i have a special class tomorrow at 7 pm it's a free class but it is on the app that's not a youtube class that's on the app it's a high yield mcq pattern class all right so that's all about me that's about us our platform and what we are all about now let's begin today's class on trauma trauma as you know extremely important <clears throat> in the previous few classes you guys have really struggled with the surgical trauma part orthopedic trauma yes you have been able to answer for surgical trauma me you are having problems which is why i feel maybe next week i'll take more trauma classes to cover more components okay so let's begin today's class let's see how you guys handle today's class so let's begin with the first question i can see your responses in the chat box so whatever is your answer you can answer in the chat box okay let's begin so according to the new atls guidelines so this is a new question it's based on new atls guidelines which of these thoracic injuries is now considered as an immediate threat to life okay so which of these injuries is now considered as an immediate threat to life so this is a little different from what was the belief earlier what were the earlier guidelines yes good evening datesh dr mkk tracheobronchial injury acha both of you have answered c is it tracheobronchial injury not flail fest or aortic injury not myocardial injury also okay great you guys are absolutely right excellent excellent it is tracheobronchial injury wonderful answer there guys so if you will see bailey i'll tell you what is given in bailey bailey says deadly dozen in thoracic trauma okay now in these deadly dozen bailey has given six which are immediate 
which can kill the person immediately and six which are urgent which won't kill the person immediately but have some severity what comes at the top of the list in immediate threat to life we discussed this yesterday what is right at the top when i say immediate threat to life most important shortest time most immediate yeah sabse zaruri that's right airway injury we discussed this yesterday airway injury takes the least time then you have many others you have massive hemothorax you have tension pneumothorax sucking chest wound or pleurocutaneous wound cardiac tamponade and flail chest okay and then you have some urgent threats to life earlier it was tracheobronchial injury not any more then you have aortic injury i'll go through this quickly aortic diaphragmatic myocardial esophageal pulmonary these are all contusions or ruptures now atls has interchanged these two as dadesh correctly said so now if they ask you a question especially if they specify it like this which of these is now considered to so pehle this was not included but if you go through the new atls manual which i don't think you have the time to go through now tracheobronchial injury is changed it is included in immediate threat to life okay so don't make a mistake in this if they give aortic transection aortic injury is not considered an immediate threat to life simply because 50% people die on the spot the 50% who reach the hospital the injury is contained it is sealed or it is contained okay it is sealed or it is contained so they will not give aortic transection don't worry they are not they will not go against the guidelines this is clearly given in the guidelines so this is what will be the question okay but be very vigilant flail chest now even though bailey gives it ye bailey mein aise diya even though it's given like this it's changed a bit okay so you have to judge has the examiner framed the question from bailey or is he asking something new that's the only way you can solve these mcqs okay so this is a previous year question asked in aims it's a very interesting one it's a nice question so there is a 45 year old lady presents to the er emergency room history of road traffic accident pulse is high bp is low jvp is elevated neck veins are prominent left lung normal right lung hyper resonant bruising what is the likely diagnosis okay this of course we need to know as clinicians because these are the two surgical emergencies which kill the patient very soon this comes in immediate threat to life all of these have taken immediate threat to life so this has to be treated on the spot in your a b c d this is the a and b so here you can't wait before you go to circulation you have to get rid of these things these problems have to be sorted aha uh-huh. datesh and nandini both say b are you sure it's not cardiac tamponade prominent neck veins back stride no it's not a cardiac tamponade yes dr m k k what's your answer don't listen to others you see what you are able to figure it's a very important extremely important question right you all are absolutely right i am happy today pratik good good job today you guys are doing a better job you guys have picked up your game in trauma this is tension pneumothorax hyper resonant yeah hyper resonant so i will tell you easy ways to differentiate okay very easy ways to differentiate tension pneumothorax cardiac tamponade massive hemothorax okay <clears throat> massive hemothorax and flail chest the others are very obvious others you will not have any doubt kuch doubt nahi aayega main confusion is between these three 
and frail chest I've just given as an add-on what information will they give you what information should you seek blood pressure JVP and respiratory exam if they give trachea if given but most of the times they will not give you trachea they are not so kind okay just remember the stable most of the times your life will be sorted sir please take lecture on stoma stoma for mcq mcq lecture or practical lecture why don't you contact me on my telegram id and tell me what you need exactly i will share my telegram id at the end of the lecture you tell me what you need exactly because here we need to continue with this tension pneumothorax bp will reduce cardiac tamponade bp will reduce massive hemothorax again bp will reduce frail chest bp remains normal normally nothing should happen to the bp jvp JVP tension pneumothorax will increase, cardiac tamponade will increase. But remember, JVP in hemothorax will reduce. Frail chest again unaffected. So these points itself will eliminate a lot of options. Up front, belly or eliminate. Okay. Now respiratory. What things should you particularly seek in tension pneumothorax? Hyper resonant. Okay, hyperresonant, absent air entry. Cardiac tamponade, respiratory exam should be normal. Okay, the only thing you will get is muffled heart sound, which is not a respiratory exam, technically speaking, which will give you a backstride. Massive hemothorax, dull note, and absent air entry. Flail chest, normal note. But absent air entry because that part that hemithorax undergoes splinting and of course paradoxical movement. Tension pneumothorax trachea will be shifted opposite side. Cardiac tamponade trachea will be normal. Massive hemothorax trachea may be shifted, may be shifted. Pale chest trachea will be normal. Clearly, this is how you are going to differentiate. I have no doubt about this. This table is not given in any book, but you can figure it out yourself. Yeah, I have written over here, muffled heart sounds. That becomes your backstride. That is backstride, right? Muffled heart sounds, raised GVP, hypotension. This is the table you need to remember on any question of this kind. So here I have hypotension, I have raised GVP, I have bruising and hyperresonant lung equal to tension pneumothorax. These questions have to be answered mathematically. These questions can't be made a mistake. Okay. Are we very clear on this? Any doubt in this concept? Please get this out of the way today. Because this is the basic premise of chest trauma. Isi ki upar sawal aate. At least AMs need PG mein aise sawal hai. Alright. Sir, why JVP decreased in hemothorax? Why GVP decrease in hemothorax? Because the blood volume will decrease. Decrease in blood volume. Blood volume will decrease, will decrease preload. You are asking a surgeon questions from medicine, huh? I just say surgeon should not be knowing this. This is pure medicine, but that's what it is. Reduce preload. Reduce GVP. Reduce filling pressure. Okay. This is an important question. After a road traffic accident, patient is suspected to have abdominal trauma. His BP is low. E fast is normal. Okay, E fast is normal. Still, I am planning to do a laparotomy. What exposure? Which maneuver should I perform for exposure? Okay, what maneuver should I perform for exposure? There is a suspected abdominal trauma. If I am doing a laparotomy and if I want to identify the site of the bleed, what maneuver should I do? Cattle brach, matox, cockerization, hogger pringle. Let's see what you are thinking. Datesh, 
who has attended my classes regularly is saying cattle brash. Anybody? Any other answer? Pooja is saying Matox. Very good. Anybody for cockerization? Anybody for Hogger Pringle? Okay, 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 okay. See, understand this question has been complicated unnecessarily. I have burdened you with unnecessary clinical information. Not required. Just to, you know, just to make you feel a little intimidated. What is the question asking you? It's asking you a very simple part. This is all that the question is asking you. If I am suspecting abdominal aortic injury, what maneuver will I perform? That is the question. This part It is just to intimidate you. But I have given you one piece of information not related to the question but which will help you overall. Remember, EFAST is normal in retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Okay, abdominal aortic injury, IVC injury, it means EFAST will be normal. EFAST does not pick up retroperitoneal hemorrhage. This was asked in AIMS. Drawbacks of EFAST. Alright, so first things first, question is only asking you suspected aortic injury. What is the exposure? Now understand, when I open the abdomen, when I do a laparotomy, okay, let's say I open the abdomen, I don't see the aorta. What do I see? I see the colon at the periphery like this. Okay, as a colon dikti hai. Transverse colon, ascending colon, descending colon. Iske upar, I will see stomach over here. Okay, and the omentum like this. Which goes to the transverse colon and goes lower down. So when I open the abdomen, I see this. And below the colon, I will see over here small bowel. I am just giving an idea that when I do a laparotomy, what exactly do I see? I don't see the kidneys. The kidneys are behind the colon. Okay. The kidneys will be behind over here. So, I don't up front see the kidney. I don't see the pancreas. The pancreas is behind the stomach. Okay. I don't see part 2, part 3 of duodenum. That's all behind the colon. Behind the mesocolon. This is not And I don't see the abdominal aorta. That's also at the back. Nor do I see the IVC. They are all very much at the back. So if I have to reach these structures. I have to move whatever is in front medially. This is the intent. When I have retroperitoneal structure. Dekhna, Aage ki cheeze, intraperitoneal structures have to be pushed medially. Then I go behind it. Like if I want to see the right kidney, I will free this colon, push it medially, go behind it and I will see the kidney. Okay. If I want to see the abdominal aorta or IVC, I move the colon, the small bowel medially. This is what the question asked you. Now, understand IVC is on the right. So if I want to look at the IVC, the viscera on the right has to be put medially. That is called right-sided medial visceral rotation. Right-sided medial visceral rotation. If I want to see right-sided structure, I will medially rotate right-sided viscera. This is cattle's manual. Similarly, if I want to see left-sided structures, abdominal aorta, I will do left-sided medial visceral rotation. This is called Maddox maneuver. I hope you got what the question is intending. Basically, if I want to see the IVC, I will do cattles. So, cattles is out. Cattles is for IVC. Maddox is for abdominal aorta. Answer is Maddox. This is what was asked. Uh, what is cockerization? Anybody? Ye cockerization ka kya hota? And what is this hogger pringle? What are these things related to? Yeah. What is cockerization? We must know these things. Huh? They are very important. Cockerization means I go behind the duodenum or I mobilize the duodenum. 
basically second and third parts of duodenum. So this, when I mobilize the duodenum to go behind the duodenum, or if I am doing a Whipple's procedure, that is called cockerization. Cockerization is limited to duodenum. What is Hogarth friendly? This is first MBBS. Huh? First MBBS student will be able to answer. Hogarth Pringle. Yeah, anybody? Very good. It is to assess liver bleed in trauma. So, if there is bleeding from the liver and I can't identify the source, what I do? I press at the porta hepatis or at the portal triadia, yeah, Pringle maneuver. So, the edge of the lesser omentum, from where the vessels are entering the liver, I press it. So when I press it, both hepatic artery and portal vein get blocked with my fingers or with a clamp. Then the bleeding in the liver stops. Then I assess the site of injury. So liver bleeding in trauma is forward bleeding. Alright, are we very clear on this? This is to do with liver trauma, not to do with retroperitoneal injury. Okay, this is an interesting question. This is a new question. It's not there in any book. I have framed this on a real life patient. Okay, when I was doing my MS residency, in my second year, we had this patient. So, this is from my memory of a real patient. So, there is a young patient. He has a lump in upper abdomen since one month, slow growing, painless, associated with early satiety. He had a bicycle accident some time back. Currently, he has a non-tender lump, 10 by 10 centimeters, extending to the left hypochondrium. We asked him to left hypochondrium. Ultrasound calls it a large cystic collection. What is the next? So you need to think what's happening here. Okay, you need to think what's happening here. Six weeks back, he had a bicycle injury. Since four weeks, he has a lump. One month, he has a lump. Lump is in the epigastrium. It is painless. It is associated with early satiety. Ultrasound is showing large cystic collection. <clears throat> uh, Tatesh, we are dealing with trauma. Trauma. He had trauma. Bicycle accident. Obviously, this lump has to do with bicycle accident. Nandini is saying, doesn't matter, admit him, keep him NPO means nil per oral and IV antibiotics. Uh, what lump are you thinking? Nandini, when you are saying, do this and what are your answers? Early satiety we have patient ko. Painless associated with early satiety. Maybe my mitar also you guys can read all this. And they give you so much information na, in a way it's good. There are so many clues. There are millions of clues in such a big question, which will tell you what the answer is. Okay, okay, okay. You are saying pseudo, pseudocyst, I am guessing. Uh, pseudocyst ka ye scenario se kya connection hai? Anand Singh D, upper GI endoscopy, very good. What is the connection between trauma and what scenario you are seeing? Pratik is also saying C. So I got A, C and D, different, different answers. Connection kya hai trauma ka from what scenario, what cystic collection you are seeing. So this, what has happened here is a traumatic pseudocyst of pancreas. This is a traumatic pseudocyst of pancreas. Please understand, not all pseudocysts of pancreas occur after pancreatitis. Okay, not all pseudocysts occur after pancreatitis. A pseudocyst simply means a fluid collection around the pancreas so it is a fluid collection around the pancreas it is happening due to leak from pancreas enzymes leak from pancreas and it is because the enzymes are coming from pancreas the fluid is amylase rich so if I check the serum amylase it will be high in amylase because it is coming from the pancreas. Simple. So when I say causes of pseudocyst of pancreas, it can be acute pancreatitis, which can cause leak. 
pancreas got inflamed it can be chronic pancreatitis it can even be trauma to pancreas all of these can cause pseudo cyst of pancreas right now coming back to the question classically a young male with a bicycle handlebar injury so when he is riding the bicycle suddenly it's a break the handlebar strikes the epigastrium when it will strike the epigastrium two organs can commonly get injured one is duodenum other is pancreas and of course left lobe of liver is there these are the two common organs which get injured following bicycle handlebar injury here it's not to do with duodenum now 6 weeks back the pseudocyst started developing he noticed it one month back look at the options admit npo iv antibiotics why would you do that patient has had the pseudocyst for one month why would you keep him nilpotent why would you give him antibiotics this option is out usg guided aspiration send for microscopy please remember never aspirate a pseudocyst unless infected never aspirate a pseudocyst unless infected okay yeah not emergency don't aspirate upper gi endoscopy why do i need to do upper gi endoscopy it will not show the pseudocyst he has early satiety because i told you this is the stomach uske piche is the pancreas so if i get a pseudocyst it compresses the stomach so he gets early satiety answer is ct abdomen with contrast this will confirm this large cystic collection is a pseudocyst of pancreas are we clear on this it's an unusual kind of a trauma question but these kind of questions are the ones which will make your rank jump up uh, last question what is the minimum duration to be labeled as pseudocyst minimum duration for which it should persist to be labeled as a pseudocyst yeah what's the answer how many weeks for how many weeks should the fluid collection persist to be labeled as pseudocyst yeah yeah that's right uh, nandini not 4 weeks it is 6 weeks okay what is the treatment for this treatment for all pseudocysts all pseudocysts there are only two treatments if they are resolving means the leak has stopped then just observe if it is persisting and then there are those criteria for persisting uh 12 weeks 6 mm thickness 6 cm symptomatic all those if it is persisting then you will do internal drainage okay then you will do internal drainage internal drainage means the cyst is emptied into the stomach or duodenum or jejunum something like that there are different surgeries cystogastrostomy is one of them the principle is internal drainage okay that is the treatment of a pseudocyst okay this is an important question following trauma to left flank patient undergoes ct scan there is a laceration into the renal pelvis there is a collection around the kidney what is the likely grade of renal trauma what is the likely grade of renal trauma this is an important question it's based on aast grading last year in neat pg they asked a lot of questions on gradings and scores which is why we need to know little bit about at least the common ast scores like at least ast of spleen ast of liver ast of kidney these three you should know so there is a laceration it is in, into the renal pelvis and there is a pararenal fluid collection what is the grade of the trauma grade 2 3 4 or 5 this is all the information that is provided they have not given you size of laceration okay 
नॉर्मली वेन यू गो थ्रू द ए एस टी ग्रेडिंग और रियल ट्रोमा थिंग वॉट इज द साइज इसमें साइज नहीं दिया बिना साइज के आंसर करना इट्स अ एम्स लेवल क्वेश्चन बट ऑफकोर्स इफ यू नो इट नथिंग लाइक इट थ्री पीपल हैव आंसर फोर हाउ आर यू गेटिंग फोर वाई आर यू सेंग फोर ए एस टी फोर में आता क्या है ओके वी विल डू ए एस टी ग्रेडिंग नो प्रॉब्लम सही द सेंग बी ए एस टी वन मीन्स ओनली hematoma only hematoma that is ast1 ast2 laceration less than 1 cm ast3 laceration more than 1 cm ast4 minor pedicle injury minor pedicle injury ast5 major injury और शैटर्ड किडनी शैटर्ड किडनी नाउ हाउ हाउ इज दिस फिटिंग ओवर इयर या व्हाट इज दिस पैरारीनल फ्लूड कलेक्शन फॉलोइंग ट्रॉमा सो इट इज सेइंग देयर इज अ इंजरी टू द लेफ्ट किडनी ओके देयर इज अ लैसरेशन व्हिच इज गोइंग ऑल द वे इनटू द रीनल पेल्विस एंड देयर इज सम कलेक्शन अराउंड द किडनी what is this collection urine absolutely right so this is grade 4 and remember grade 4 is minor pedicle injury or urine leak or injury extending into the pelvis or pelvic laceration system so urine leak means grade 4 this is what you need to remember this is all they can ask you so this fluid collection is what is in scientific terms called a urinoma it's called a urinoma all right that's what you need to know acha this is from delhi so during abdominal hysterectomy the right ureter was accidentally injured okay it was cut some part was lost this thing was done to reconstruct the ureter what is this called ileal conduit nesbitt procedure quarry procedure blanden procedure this is from bailey ah bailey must know the picture is also there so either ureter ko injury hui hai si okay some part of the ureter was lost because of the injury there was a little shortening so to correct the shortening part of the bladder was used like this to reconstruct what is this called yeah excellent excellent absolutely right it's called boari flap excellent boari flap so boari flap is nothing but utilizing the urinary bladder to reconstruct the ureter uh ileal conduit is done when when do i do ileal conduit when do i do ileal conduit yeah anybody what is the role of ileal conduit sare procedure puchunga soch ke rakhna ileal conduit is done after cystectomy so if the urinary bladder is removed say he has a carcinoma bladder and i remove the entire urinary bladder after cystectomy i use ileal conduit as a bladder substitute it substitutes the bladder what is nesbitt procedure this we discussed recently i discussed this in one of my uh, special classes nesbitt penile fibrosis uh, penis mein fibrosis nahi hota but theek hai i will accept it can you tell me exactly what it is used for cordy okay indications are correct but what is it doing it is correcting curvature of the penis it is correcting curvature of the penis okay so whether the curvature is because of a cordy when do we get cordy cordy kab hoti hai or is it a congenital curvature or it is peyroni disease where you have pox it will use it so that is 
Nesbitt procedure. Yeah, I call I do plication. Like if the penis is bent in this direction, as a curvature, I take sutures on the opposite side, on the convex side, and I make it straight. That is Nesbitt procedure. What is Blanden procedure? Just tell me where it is used. It's in urology only. Eh? Urology procedure here. Where is Blanden procedure used? Yeah, Nesbitt, Peroni, Cordy. And I also asked you, when do I get a Cordy of penis? Blanden nahi nahi, urology, urology mein hai, Blanden procedure. Wo glands hai of Noon and Blanden. Those are the names of the glands. Noon and Blanden. I am asking you, where do you use Blanden procedure in urology? And of course, second part, Cordy of penis is seen in which disease? In which disease do I see Cordy of penis? I have not discussed urology. That's why I want to see, do you guys know a little bit of urology? Or should I take next week urology on YouTube? Blanden procedure is used for urethral reconstruction. It's a type of urethroplasty. Okay, if someone has a very big urethral structure which I can't dilate, in that place I do resection and anastomosis. Abhi anastomosis urethra mein har bar possible nahi hoga. So sometimes I use other structures to reconstruct the urethra. One of the procedures is Blanden procedure to reconstruct the urethra. You have not answered where do I see cordy of penis? Cordy of penis is seen where? In which disease do I see cordy of penis? Are? Ye to sab books mein diya. Excellent, excellent, absolutely right. Hypospediasis. Absolutely right. Hypospediasis. Why do you get an hypospediasis? I'll tell you. It's very easy. Hypospediasis mein hota kya? In a normal person, the urethra should open here at the terminal end. In hypospediasis, the urethra opens tak, somewhere lower down. So what happens? Jo part hai, till where the urethra doesn't reach, that becomes fibrous and that causes a cordy. So cordy in hypospediasis is towards the side of the hypospediasis. Okay, that's why you get a cordy. Yeah, circumcision is contraindicated till I repair the hypospediasis. Now about ureteric injury, what was in this question? There are different ways of getting ureteric injuries. Please understand, ureteric injury is rarely ever going to be following abdominal trauma. It's usually going to be surgical trauma. Surgical trauma, because I told you ureter is also very much at the back. So if I am doing a sigmoidectomy, sigmoid surgery, if I am doing hysterectomy, if I am doing nephrectomy, renal surgeries, of course renal surgery mein itna bearing nahi hoga, sigmoidectomy, hysterectomy, in these surgeries, I accidentally injure the ureter, it happens. Now, depending on how much it is injured, there, there are different options. If there is no loss of ureteric length, you just do end to end anastomosis. If there is a little loss of length, like we saw in this case, thoda ureter chala gaya, beech ka part. In that case, you need to do some kind of reconstruction, like a boari flap. Boari flap was a bladder. Agar bhoat sara ureter chala gaya, for whatever reason, late diagnosed injury, significant loss, then I have no choice but to do ureteral ureterostomy iska matlab kya hai ureteral ureterostomy it means agar ye wala ureter chala gaya lost a lot of length of this ureter and i can't do any reconstruction so what i do i use the opposite ureter opposite ureter to sahi hai na so i join this ureter to, to the opposite ureter which is closer so the opposite ureter will drain this kidney also that is ureteral ureterostomy. It can be used for longer segment ureteric injuries. Of course, agar itna bhi length nahi hai, then I have no option but to do nephrectomy. Then there is no option. Okay. Are we very clear on this? So I hope you learned.
good deal of general surgical trauma in our three sessions now a little bit of orthopedic trauma of course there has to be some orthopedics important question very important question but i think orthopedics mein aap logo ko answer aa jata hai how to say that it is little or significant loss that is judgment the surgeon has to take that judgment it's a judgment call there is no measurement ke 2 cm is little and more than 2 is significant because the length of ureter varies from person to person right so there is a 70 year old female slipped in the bathroom presents with hip pain i'll give you a clue clue there now right hip pain right side hip pain how will you treat this is our x-ray how will you treat cancellous screw hemi arthroplasty dynamic hip screw dhs stands for dynamic hip screw dynamic screw hip screw और प्रोक्सिमल फीमोरल नेल मैंने बोला था मैं हर बार औरतों के सवाल इजी नहीं दूंगा दिस इज अई लेवल ऑर्थोपीडिक क्वेश्चन हाई लेवल ऑर्थोपीडिक क्वेश्चन दिस इमेज इज देयर ऑनलाइन ये मुझे ऑनलाइन मिला है आई एम नॉट एन ऑर्थोपेडिशियन मुझे ऑनलाइन मिली है इट्स अ क्लासिकल इमेज ओके इट इज अ क्लासिकल इमेज सो यू हैव टू बी एबल टू डायग्नोज क्योंकि तुम्हारे एग्जाम में भी ऑनलाइन इमेज ही आने वाली है हा अच्छा दतेश एंड पूजा बोध से हेमी वेरी गुड आई है फ्रेम द क्वेश्चन विथ अ लॉट ऑफ क्लूज ओके देर आर लॉट ऑफ क्लूज इन द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई इज इट इंट्रा कैप्सुलर फ्रैक्चर ऑफ नेक ऑफ फीमर और इज इट एक्स्ट्रा कैप्सुलर विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज इंटर ट्रोकैंट्रिक फर्स्ट यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दैट क्योंकि दोनों का ट्रीटमेंट अलग है ठीक है पहले वो आइडेंटिफाई करना फिर तुमको मतलब ये एक्सरे में क्या है फिर तुमको उसका ट्रीटमेंट इन दिस सिनारियो आइडेंटिफाई करना दतेश सिंह ए वेस्कुलर नेक्रोसिस इज इट ओके इफ देर वॉज ए वी एन आई वुड है ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ए वेस्कुलर नेक्रोसिस एक्सेप्ट हेमी आरोप्लास्टिक so then that's the answer yeah any anyway, so then your answer dutesh is b acha very good anybody anyone else uh, don't you think this is this thing that is over here is a little unusual yahan par dekho aur yahan par dekho dono same hai kya ye tumko thoda ajeeb nahi lag raha ye definitely there is a fracture either it's intracapsular or extracapsular kaun si fracture hai bhai इंट्रा कैप्सुलर है एक्स्ट्रा कैप्सुलर ये क्या है ये ये जो लटक रहा है इधर वॉट इज दिस थिंग हाँ एज तो बाद में आएगा पहले क्या है वो तो आइडेंटिफाई करें हाँ यस कैन समबडी टेल मी इज दिस इंट्रा कैप्सुलर फ्रैक्चर नेक ऑफ फीमर और इज इट इंटर ट्रोकेंट्रिक फ्रैक्चर नेक ऑफ फीमर लुक एट दिस because boss till you can't identify your because dono ke treatment hi alag hai lesser trochanter yeah this is lesser trochanter extra capsular excellent so first part this is extra capsular if it is extra capsular fracture both these options are out okay because extra capsular fractures are metaphyseal fractures there is no avn no avascular necrosis so i don't have to do hemi arthroplasty and cancellous screws also not done so first things first ye dono to tumko x ray dekh ke eliminate karne chahiye the your choice is only between dynamic hip screw and proximal femoral nail this has to be decided this is the only tricky part in the question whether i'll use dhs or whether i'll use proximal femoral nail now understand whenever there is an intertrochanteric neck of femur fracture it has to be divided into stable or unstable if it is stable 
I can both I can use either DHS or proximal femoral nail. Both are okay. If it is unstable, then I I am going to use proximal femoral nail. So the answer here is proximal femoral nail because the lesser trochanter is displaced. It makes it unstable. Okay. If the lesser trochanter is displaced, it makes it unstable. Also, if you guys were confused looking at the x-ray, whether it's intra or extra, remember, 70 year old female, very old people, extra age, extra capsular fracture. Little younger people, 50 years, 55 years, less than 60, 40 to 60, fairly younger, intra capsule. Okay, that is the difference. Ye dono treatment, they are for intracapsular fractures. Okay, whether I use cancellous screw or hemiarthroplasty, it's not for extracapsular or intertrochanter fractures. So today I am happy. Aap logo ne gadbad ki ortho mein, I am very happy. This first picture, this is dynamic hip screw. This is how it looks. This is dynamic hip screw across a fracture intertrochanter. And this is the proximal femoral nail. Can anybody tell me? why i should avoid in unstable fractures why i should avoid this pfn can be used stable or unstable dynamic hip screw better to be avoided if it's unstable where the lesser trochanter is out this is me you can see lesser trochanter is avulsed make makes it unstable i will prefer proximal femoral nail as a cue why why in this case this is better than this. Proximal femoral nail is better than dynamic hip screw. In this case, what is the reason? Yeah, anybody? Because I believe my level of orthopedics and your level of orthopedics is not very different. Because I am not an orthopedician, you are not an orthopedician. So we are kind of at the same level. So can you tell me why DHS is avoided in unstable fracture? It's very easy. Understand the word dynamic, right? The word dynamic means every time the person will stand, this will fall in the socket. It will move. It will cause compression. If it's unstable, it will not unite properly. The alignment will be affected. This proximal femoral nail will give me more stability because this is not dynamic. This will give me more stability. So proximal femoral nail is preferred in unstable IT fractures. Okay. But both of these are only in IT neck femora. Only in IT. Not in intracapsular. Let's not have that confusion. I am not going to discuss intracapsular. It's a very big discussion. We will discuss intertrochantric. Easy fracture. Okay. All right. I hope this question everybody can answer. This principle of treatment is used in all of these fractures except. This principle of treatment is used in all of these fractures except. Lateral condyle humerus, ulecranon, medial malleolus, lateral malleolus. This question I have got made from Maheshwarya. Which is orthopedic ki book. Which we are undergraduate. Mein padte hai. This is from Maheshwari. The options are from Maheshwari. So this, what is this that is being done over here? First tell me that. And is this principle of treatment is used in which of these except? Achha, kya principle hai? Pehle wo bata do. Teen, teen words hai. Teen words mein answer do. What is this principle? You can tell me the short form also. What is this that is used over here? Tension band wiring. Excellent. Tension band wiring. What is the principle of tension band wiring? What is the principle of tension band wiring? How does it work? Remember in all fractures, what I need for the fracture to unite, what I need is compression at fracture site. In tension band wiring, when I use tension band wiring, what I do? So let's say it's a very mobile piece of bone which has gotten fractured like this. Commonly used for patella. Okay. 
if it's a very mobile piece of bone what i do i put two k wires across and i use stainless steel wires in figure of eight pattern okay i use stainless steel wires in figure of eight pattern so what will happen when the person walks or when the fracture segments attempt to move away the pins will bring it together the pins will bring it together so when there is going to be distraction at the fracture site the pins will bring it together or the wires will bring it together this is called distraction compression principle distraction compression principle uh, what was the principle over here in dynamic hip screw this is based on what what principle is ka principle kya Yeah, what is the principle of dynamic hip screw? Compression during movement was correct. Is me kya ho raha? This is not distraction compression. Ah, ऐसा नहीं है जब दूर जा रहा है तो वो wire उसको नजदीक खींचेगी. This is something else. ये ये कौन सा compression? What compression is this? When he stands, this will fall into the socket. This is called sliding compression. Okay, the socket will slide. All right. ये जो पार्ट है स्क्रू द स्क्रू विल स्लाइड इनटू द सॉकेट सो दिस इज कॉल्ड स्लाइडिंग कंप्रेशन दिस वाज टेंशन मैड वायरिंग टेंशन मैड प्रिंसिपल और डिस्ट्रैक्शन कंप्रेशन टेंशन मैड प्रिंसिपल इज यूज्ड फॉर ऑल फ्रैक्चर्स एक्सेप्ट लैटरल कॉन्डाइल ह्यूमरस व्हाट इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ लैटरल कॉन्डाइल ह्यूमरस सो ओलेक्रोनन में करते हैं मैलियोलर में करते हैं और पटेला में करते हैं व्हाट इज द ट्रीटमेंट Oh wow! You already have medial malleolus TBA. Wow! So, तुम्हारे लिए सवाल इजी हो गया. Tell me treatment of lateral condyle humerus fracture. Open reduction internal fixation with what? ORIF with what? With what? Plates and screws. We did this yesterday. Yeah? This was fracture of necessity. I hope you remember. This was fracture of necessity. कली किया हमने. Fracture of necessity, lateral condyle humerus, Montegia, Galezi, Barton's fracture. They were all intra-articular. K wire, absolutely right. This is K wire. Tension band principle is used for fractures where there is going to be a lot of distraction. Okay, so patella is distracted because it is inside the tendon of quadriceps. So the quadriceps tendon distracts it. Olecranon has the extensor tendons, so the ten, like triceps tendon. So the tendon, every time the hand will move, will pull the fragments away. So I'm using that principle, tension band principle. All right. So every time it tries to move away, the figure of eight wire will bring it closer. Distraction, compression. Okay. So hope you guys enjoyed this class. um i have a special class tomorrow at 7 pm tomorrow 7 pm i have a special class sunday evening valentines day mcq pattern class on high yield topics in surgery so do join me tomorrow it's a special class it's not a youtube class so you need the app for that and of course remember please follow me on my telegram id Uh, someone was asking me about some sessions. You can message me on my ID. Yeah, one hour class. High yield, high yield topics in one hour. One hour, seven to eight pm. And if you want to follow me on Plus, you want to learn from me surgery, everything comprehensively. You can subscribe to the Plus platform. Okay, and you can use my referral code that is ten surgery. All right, that will get you a ten percent discount. So hope you guys enjoyed this class. Have a good weekend. I hope to see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the special class. Do remember to give a thumbs up to like this video. It will cover general GI. It will be a mix of surgical topics, but it will be clinical and uh, image based. Sir, can you put more MCQ on group? Every day I will put one MCQ. I hope you are seeing the results of the MCQ. How people are faring? 25, 30, sare mix. I will I will keep posting. Don't worry. On almost every day. So please like the video. 
and I hope to see you guys tomorrow at 7 p.m. on the uh, special class.